Hi, I'm Jill, and I'm here to give you an introduction to SQL Server Database Unit Testing in Visual Studio 2013. Unit testing is commonly leveraged in application development, but the same benefits of automated validation can be applied to database development as well. In Visual Studio 2013, integrated database unit testing can be run directly against the database or in conjunction with the database project. It can even be configured to run automatically in a team build scenario. Today, I'll show you how to get up and running with database unit testing targeting SQL Server 2012. Inside of Visual Studio, I have a SQL Server database project that is my company database that has a basic table, a view, and a stored procedure. To do unit testing for my stored procedure, um, we will go over to SQL Server Object Explorer, and under the Projects node, you will see Company X. This is a logical view of my project. If I drill down to Programmability, Stored Procedures, and then right-click on my Add Employee Procedure, I can create a unit test. The unit test uh, can be made in Visual Basic or C Sharp. I'm going to pick C Sharp. I'm going to call this Test Company X. This is going to create a test project uh, within Visual Studio. This is the regular Visual Studio test project. And it's going to prompt me for the database connection that I want to use for executing uh, my unit test. So I'm going to pick my development environment. Uh, I also can choose to have a secondary data connection that the uh, validation will use. One of the reasons you might want to use a secondary connection is because you might want to execute your uh, procedure using one set of credentials and then use a second uh, set of credentials that might have more access to do the validation. You can also choose to deploy the database project before you run the unit test. You can also choose to deploy the database project before you run your unit test. This will deploy the database against your target uh, connection before you run your unit test. I'm just going to go directly against the database, so I'm going to click OK. Now this is going to generate a database unit test that gets seeded with an execute call for my stored procedure. As you can see, here's the execute of my stored procedure, and I can set the data that I want to pass in. So for my unit test, I actually want to create a new employee. So I'm going to go ahead and um, set the data to add Carol as my new employee. Uh, one thing when you're running unit tests is I want to make sure that Carol doesn't exist before my test actually runs. So as in regular unit testing, there is a pretest and a post-test. So the pretest, I can create a SQL T-SQL script that will delete the employee where the ID is Carol's ID. When I come back to my test, I want to validate that oh, I actually did execute uh, the stored procedure, and that will give me a result set back. When you create new unit tests, you'll have this inconclusive test condition to prevent you from creating a unit test without any validation as a default, which then would uh, give you a false positive pass. So I'm going to delete that, uh, that default test condition. I'm going to add in the row count condition, and I'm going to on purpose leave my row count to zero. Uh, I want to force a failure so that you can see what a failure looks like. Uh, if this passes, the row count will actually be one because it affected one, uh, one record. I also want to make sure that after I run the test, that I validate that Carol actually did get into um, the system. So I can create a post test. So after that executes, here I can do a simple select star from employee where ID equals 555 to ensure that she actually was inserted. So here again, I can create a test condition in my post test, and I want my row count when I do this select to be one. Okay. Now I'm going to build my solution so that my test will show up in Test Explorer. So over here in Test Explorer, this is Visual Studio's built in Test Explorer. You can see that my add employee test is now in the list. I can right click and say run selected test. And this is now going to connect to my database, run my pre-test, then my test, and then my post-test, and give me results. Down below, you can see that the uh, test failed because the row count condition that I didn't update returned back one, but I was expecting zero. Now I can go and change my row count number to make it pass. So we, we are expecting to get back one row count because we updated the employee. 
So now that I've updated that, I want to run the test again to make sure that it passes. So as you can see, my test passed, which also indicates that the pretest ran because it deleted Carol out of my database before the test ran, resulting in a failure. Database unit testing in Visual Studio 2013 is a powerful tool to validate functionality at the database level. It is integrated into the unit testing story in Visual Studio and runs in conjunction with your other applications unit tests and within the TFS application lifecycle management solution. By instituting SQL Server database unit tests for your application's database, you can ensure that changes to your database do not break existing functionality that your application depends on.